Hi, this is Kenny Lee again, and let's talk about Newton's second law with friction. So friction comes in two different flavors. We have kinetic friction and static friction. Now both types of friction use the same equation where the force of friction is less than or equal to mu, which is the coefficient of friction, times the normal force. Now the reason why it's less than or equal to is because friction can never move an object. So if I'm pulling on something a little bit, there only may be a little bit of friction required of the total that's available. But as I push, pull harder and harder and harder, that friction goes up and up and up until eventually I'm pulling hard enough to overcome friction and the block actually starts moving. So that's why it's a less than or equal to sign there. Most of the time, we're going to set these equal to, to each other. But that's the reason why, is because sometimes you can pull and not exceed the maximum friction available and until you do, it doesn't move. Mu, sometimes they put a little subscript of S for static friction. And static friction means the two objects are stuck together and they're not sliding against each other. So like maybe a ball rolling where they're not sliding against each other. Or um, say a block on an incline where the block should slide down the incline but doesn't. That means there's some type of static friction there holding it in place. Or if it's just something that's just setting steel, and you're pushing against it, that's going to be static friction holding it in place. Kinetic friction is when the two objects are rubbing against each other. So that means they're sliding against each other like this. Okay. Uh, spinning wheels, where you're in one place and the wheels keep turning, that's going to be kinetic friction because the two are sliding against each other. Kinetic friction is always going to be smaller than static friction. The reason why is because we look at it microscopically. The surfaces are kind of rough. So with it static, they can kind of set against each other and kind of Velcro themselves together a little bit. So they kind of set in, and so it's hard to push them until they break loose. And me hit the camera. But with kinetic friction, they don't get a chance to lock in as much, and so they just kind of slide in between. So they don't get a chance to sink in and really get a good grip each with each other, unlike static friction, which locks because they, they sit against each other. Kinetic friction just can't, doesn't have time for them to set themselves up with each other. So static friction is always going to be stronger than kinetic friction. Okay, let's look at a problem. Okay, we've got this one. We've got an 8 kilogram box being pulled horizontally by a rope. The force in the rope is 90 newtons. The mass of the block is 8 kilograms. And we've got a coefficient of static friction, or no, actually, Coefficient of kinetic friction between the box and the object is 0.2. Coefficients and indices in physics usually don't have units. The bigger the value, the stronger it is. So this one only has a value of 0.2. So none of your coefficient of frictions will actually have a unit. It's just a multiplication factor, as it were. So let's first start off with a free body diagram of this. So we've got... Weight acting down, we have the normal force acting up, and then we have the tension in the rope, that's 90 newtons. Okay, now here's the thing. We would want to eventually do this, where MA is equal to the sum of the forces. We know one of those forces is the tension, but we also know that there's friction there, so there's one more thing that we're missing here, we're missing just a little bit of the force due to friction. Let's make that an arrow hit. Now, how do we find that out? Well, force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force, or less than or equal to. We're going to say it's equal to here. Now, the problem is, what's the normal force? Well, we've got a horizontal table. So on that horizontal table, the weight pushing down on that table has to equal the normal force of the table pushing against the block. They have to cancel each other out. So the normal force on this horizontal table is got to be equal to the weight of that object, which is equal to its mass times gravity. So my force of friction is equal to mu times mg. So I can calculate that. Mu is 0.2, mass is 8, and gravity is 
And so my value for friction is 15.68 newtons. All right, now I know the friction value. So now I can do this. But remember, the summation is only for the forces that's actually affecting the motion, which in this case are the two horizontal forces. So we have a mass of 8. Acceleration, we don't know. Force that's pulling is 90. And the force of friction that's holding it back is 15.68 newtons. Let me write this out. MA equals the force, oh, it's called tension. Since that's what I used before, minus the force of friction. There we go. And so now I can go ahead and calculate this. So 90 minus 15.68 equals that. So 8A equals 94.32. Then divide by 8. And so this will have an acceleration of 9.29 meters per second squared, or 9.29 meters per second per second. See, the extra little bit is making sure that we know what the normal is and figure out how much friction we have to plug it in. Let's try another one. This time, we've got our box at on a level table. But the rope is now being pulled at an angle. And so that complicates things a little bit. If I draw my free body diagram, I've got the weight of the object, the normal force, but I've got this tension being pulled at an angle. And since it's being pulled at an angle, part of this is actually moving the block, but the other part is actually lifting the block. And that's going to play a factor when we figure out the normal force. So first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and break that angle into the force in the X and the force in the Y. So Fy equals F sine of theta. And so that's going to be 90 sine of 20 degrees gives me a force of 30.78 newtons. The force in the x is going to be force times the cosine of theta. So 90 cosine of 20 degrees. Twenty cosine times ninety gives me eighty-four point five seven newtons. All right, that's always a good starting off point. But now here's the change. Where on the previous problem we're pulling horizontally, so there was nothing affecting things vertically. But this time, since we're pulling at an angle, now this part of that tension is actually lifting the box. So the normal force is no longer equal to the weight of the box. What happens is we've got this component lifting up and this component lifting up. So now our weight is got to be equal to the normal force plus the force in the Y. And so if I want to find the normal force, I need to move that over. Because remember, the up and the down have to balance out each other. Because we're not the box not rising up in the air or sinking through the table. So the downward force and the total upward force have to equal each other out. So if I solve this for the normal force, we get that we're going to have to subtract off the force in the Y. Now, also remember this. If we're pulling hard enough at an angle so that the vertical part actually is bigger than the weight of the object, then the box actually comes off the, off the surface and goes flying off. But this one, we have to see here. But, but in this case, 
that shouldn't happen. So we'll see what the normal force is in this case. So that's mg minus, I'm going to go ahead and write it out symbolically here, f sine of theta. And then we can go ahead and put in some numbers here. That's 8 times 9.8. .8. We already figured out what this one is. That's 30.78. So 9.8 times 8 minus 30.78 gives me a normal force of 47.62 newtons. Now, we're getting there. Now we can actually figure out the force of friction because that's equal to mu times the normal force. So our coefficient of friction was 0.2. Normal force is 47.62. So 0.2 times 47.62 gives me a force of friction of 9.52 newtons. Here now we can actually figure out the acceleration that we're being asked about. See, there's a new level of complication to this with all the angles and such. So we've got MA equals the sum of the forces. So mass is 8. A we don't know. I'll write it symbolically first. Uh, let's call that force in the X minus the force of friction. So in this case, let me just move this down. 8A equals, force in the X is 84.57 minus 9.52. 84.57 minus 9.52 gives me that. Then I want to divide by 8 which is the mass, I get 9.38 meters per second squared is the acceleration of that box. So the big takeaways from this one is making sure you break up that angle into the horizontal and vertical components. And then since we're lifting up, we're going to have to find the new normal. Now, what happens if we're actually pulling down? Well, if we're pulling down, now that force in the Y is actually increasing the normal force, increasing the amount of force that the table has to push back up in order to keep the block from sinking into the table. And so then it would be FG equals, well, if you want to keep all the downs on one side, it would be FG plus FN or FY. If you want to keep all the downward forces on one side, it'll be Fg plus Fy equals Fn. I put it here because the force is lifting, so normal force is an upward force, this was an upward force. But if we're pulling down, this will become a downward force, so I'll put it over here. That will actually increase the normal force, thus increasing the friction and making it even harder to move. Both those two examples were kinetic friction. Let's try one where there's some static friction. So in this case, I have got what I call the shoe problem. This is now, it could be a shoe, it could be a tire, it could be anything, anything that the two objects are not sliding against each other. So this one, we want to figure out the maximum acceleration of this athlete that has a mass of 80 kilograms can have with this particular pair of shoes if the coefficient of static friction between the shoe and the ground is 0.6. The higher that friction, the harder they can push against the ground before their foot slips. If they exceed the maximum friction force or static friction force between the shoe and the ground, that means their foot starts to slide and they lose some of that force that they're pushing against the ground so they can't accelerate as quick. So you want to push off just as hard as that friction will allow and no more to get your maximum acceleration. So in this case, 
we have gravity acting down because the person's weight. We have the normal force acting up. Now we're actually, if we're going to push off, we're actually pushing back. So this is the direction of the force from that person's foot. And so friction will actually be what's causing that person to move forward. You push back against the ground, the ground pushes forward against you. So it's the friction force that's actually pushing that person forward. Well, we know that's a horizontal surface, so we know these two equal each other. So force due to gravity and the normal force will equal each other. And that's equal to the mass and acceleration of gravity. So here's the thing about this one. Let's first figure out the force of friction. The normal force will be equal to the weight. So the force of friction is mu times the normal force. So that's mu times mg. So for this one, we get 0.6. Mass is 80. Gravity is 9.8. And so we get a maximum force of friction of 470.4 newtons. So what's the condition for this shoe to be the most efficient? So MA equals the sum of the forces. Well, we don't want this shoe to slip, so we want it to actually stay in place. That means we want acceleration to be zero. I know we're figuring out the acceleration of the person, but right now we're thinking about the shoe. The shoe doesn't want to move as the person gets thrown forward. It stays in the same spot, so its acceleration is actually zero. So we want to know the acceleration of the person. Now, the shoe's staying in one place, but we're going to calculate the acceleration of that person. And the only force that's actually on the person that's making it move is this force of friction. And so we have the mass of the person, 80. Acceleration we don't know. Force of friction is 470.4. So the maximum acceleration of this person is 5.88 meters per second squared. Okay, you might ask, why did I just use the force of friction? Because we're asking about the person. The shoe itself is staying still. So the shoe itself, the force of friction is equal to the force that person's pushing back against the ground. But the only, only force on the person that's making him move is this. This force is actually on the ground. That force is actually on the person. So the only force acting on the person is friction. So that's why I only use that here to figure out his acceleration. Thank you. Tune in again and we'll try some more um, calculations with friction and Newton's laws, some symbolically and some on a ramp. Thank you. Bye.